insert in operation breakdown unit. Now that we have learnt a little bit about how to do the flow chart of a trouser, we have also learnt about what is an operation breakdown, we have taken an example and seen how to do the line balancing as well. Now let us take an example, this particular garment in industrial terms is called a polo t-shirt. Now polo t-shirt generally comes without pocket. Let us look at the various different parts of a polo t-shirt. We will break down the operations into a flow chart and further we will analyze the operation breakdown of the same. If you have a look at this, this is the polo t-shirt, it has a rib collar, it has a rib in the sleeve, over and above that it has a placket here, so this is called the left placket and this is called the right placket. You have the moon patch here which is generally present in all of the polo t-shirts. You have a slit here and most of the operations happen in uh, overlock. So we will look at the operation breakdown of a polo t-shirt. Now like I said we should break it down into sub assemblies first. The first sub, sub assembly being the front part that is the front placket. Once the front placket is sewn and the next sub assembly would be your back wherein we would be attaching the moon patch and then we will move on to the sub assembly of sleeves wherein we will attach the rib and give a top stitch to the rib and then we will combine everything at the assembly point where we will attach the shoulders, we will close the collar and finish attaching the sleeves and the side seam. So just have a look at it again. We have the front placket, we need to attach the collars with the tape, we need to attach the moon patch, the sleeves need to be attached with the rib, the garment needs to be attached at the shoulder with the front and back combining. So these are the major areas on how a polo t-shirt needs to be sewn. Let us write down the flow chart of the polo t-shirt now that you guys have an idea. We will look out look at the various sub assemblies right now. First we will have the sub assembly of front. We will now look at the process flow chart step by step. First we will take the front sub assembly. The front sub assembly will include all the placket operations. So the first operation here would be your marking of placket at the placket position. So once we have marked the placket in the front part as in we need to mark it here to put a slit. The next operation would be attach attach the placket to the front. So this would refer to this part inner part to be attached to the front. Please note I am not writing down uh, the order of all the operations because we need to reshuffle these again based on the sub assemblies 
when we come to the final assembly. So, let us just break down into operations and further to that we will mark down the order of operations. Now that the placket is attached, we need to put a edge stitch. We need to attach it is turned here and an edge stitch is given here. So, we need to mention that we need to put the edge stitch. edge stitch on the placket. Uh, for the placket normally the short form would be PLKT. So, I will be using that PLKT placket. And then once the stitch is done, this is again closed and this top stitch is given and finally, the placket is closed with a box. So, box stitch and closing of placket. So, these are the major operations that will happen in the front sub assembly. Now, let us move on to the back sub assembly. So, here we will note down all the various operations that need to happen in the back part of the garment before the shoulders are being joined. So, the first operation here is the moon patch overlock. overlock. Now, here this part is the moon patch. It is called the moon patch because of its shape and it is generally there for almost 90 percent of the polo garments. So, the first one would be moon patch overlock. This would be the first operation wherein just the overlock it will be a single piece of fabric wherein the overlock will be given. And the next operation would be is to attach the already overlocked moon patch to the back part of the garment. So, it would be moon patch attach. This operation will be done by a single needle lock stitch machine. So, as you can see the moon patch is attached to the back part of the garment. All right. Now, we move on to the third sub assembly which is the sleeves. So, in this the process flow chart would have only two operations. The first one would be the rib attach. As you can see this part is called the sleeve and the rib is attached here at the edge of the sleeve. So, instead of the usual sleeve hemming operation, we normally have the ribs being attached. So, the operation here being rib attach. So, this particular operation is done by an overlock machine. Now, we need to finish the attaching of the rib that is being done by the top stitch operation. So, we give a top stitch to the ribs. So, it is called ribs top stitch. This is again done by the single needle machine. So, as you can see we have three major sub assemblies clear here. Let us move on to the main assembly wherein all these three sub assemblies come together as one single garment. Ideally in a polo t-shirt the first operation that is being normally done is the hemming of the bottom. It is very unusual considering the fact that ideally in polo garments the first operation normally comes as the uh, bottom hem operation. This is very unusual 
because in many of the garments most of the garments the bottom hem comes at almost in the last of the garment construction now since there are slits that are needs to be stitched here in polo garments the bottom hem comes as the first operation so there are two parts correct we have the front and we have the back so in but in particularly polo t-shirts first the hems are being stitched with a flat lock machine so you have the front part and the back part which is stitched together so the assembly first operation would be bottom hem this probably is a first operation in the assembly but then this becomes the very first operation of the whole garment first the bottom hem of the front and back is stitched and then only all the other operations of front and back start please note the first operation here hence becomes bottom hem of front and back so as you can see I have put this first operation as number 1. So, this will be the order of operations when we move on to our operation breakdown. The next operation here in the assembly is the shoulder attach. We attach the shoulder generally in knits due to the stretchability factor. We attach the shoulder with a mobile on tape. So, once the bottom hem has been stitched, we move on to the main assembly operation. The first main assembly operation would basically be the attaching of the shoulders. When we say attaching of the shoulders, it means attaching of the front part and the back part together. So, the attaching of the shoulders would come here. Alright, so the first assembly operation would be shoulder overlock. So, since most of the knits will have uh, main attaching operations um, as in main closure operations with the mobile on tape. So, the mobile on tape is basically a plastic tape which is given for reinforcement. So, as you can see here in even if you take your t-shirts which you wear at home, you can see that there is a tape attached at the shoulder part that is the mobile on tape. This mobile on tape is given to uh, many knits garments for reinforcement also it also it is also given to certain baby garments as well to give, give much more reinforcement to the seam so the shoulder is overlocked with the mobile on tape once the shoulder is joined certain polo t-shirts will have a shoulder top stitch this particular garment does not have a shoulder top stitch so we move on to the next part of the garment which is attaching of the collar so now we attach the collar along with the placket with the tape as you can see there is a tape here so that is a one shot operation so collar attach with placket and tape this is a one, one shot operation which is done once the collar is attached to the body part the next operation is turning off the placket inside out when it is sewn the wrong side of the placket is shown with the collar so once the collar operation is done the placket is turned and then a top stitch is given so this particular operation is generally known as finishing of the collar so collar finish finish that would be your next operation this is done on both sides with a single needle operation so once this particular operation is done we finish the placket as well 
once this collar is turned and given a top stitch here the placket is finished with a final operation so collar finish placket finish once the placket is finished the next part comes to the attachment of the sleeve so here the sleeves are attached with an overlock operation so sleeves attach the sleeves are attached with an overlock operation similarly since the overlock here is a very small operation another operation is added which is the placket serge serging generally refers to overlock you can see that the down part of the placket is serge to give a better finish sleeve attach and placket serge that is overlock this is an industrial term serging is an industrial term it also refers to overlock once this is done the sleeve is given a top stitch if required here in this particular garment there is no top stitch mentioned so we will be ignoring the top stitch part of it the next operation comes to the attaching of the sides this is the side seam so this operation is done by a side seam overlock the side seam overlock is done along with the attachment of the um, main lab, uh, uh, label as well as the as well as the button tape that is a tape wherein one extra button is given which is normally given in most of the garments so the side seam attachment is done here so it is done from the sleeve till the side so the side seam operation is done on both the sides of the garment to finish the garment okay and the last the operation comes for the slits as you can see the uh, as compared to your round neck t-shirts polo t-shirts will have a slit so the first operation here would be overlocking of the slits once the slits are being overlocked they are finished with a tape and finally the slits um, uh, finally tacking operations are given so finish the slit with tape the last operation here would be your sleeve tacking there is a tacking part here it either comes at the uh, attachment of the sleeve uh, side seam or here as well it can be pushed back and forward so slit tacking so now we need to number the operations based on their order we have already uh, mentioned operation number 1 as the bottom hem of the front and back so marking placket would become operation 2 attach placket to the front will be operation number 3 edge stitch on placket will become operation number 4 box stitch and closing of placket will become operation number 5 moon patch overlock so the back assembly comes next will become operation number 6 moon patch attach will become operation number 7 right yes and then we have a uh, rib attach as operation number 8 which comes as the sleep sub assembly then we have operation number 9 here as rib top stitch shoulder overlock with mobilon tape becomes operation number 10 collar attach with placket and tape will become operation 11 collar finishing will become operation number 12 
placket finishing will become operation number 13. Sleeve attach operation, a sleeve attach and placket search that is overlocking of the placket will become operation number 14. Side seam overlock will, oper will become operation number 15. Slit overlock will become operation number 16. Finishing slit with the tape will become operation number 17. The final operation becomes slit tacking as operation number 18. Now what happens is we these three are independent operations all right it is not necessary that only if operation 5 gets completed can operation number 6 start as you can see these are all independent sub assemblies whereas the assembly is dependent on the completion of the sub assemblies to start. So these become independent operation and these all become dependent operations. So as per a flow chart we need to have a clarity on what operation comes first operation comes second and that is why we put the numbers. So while setting up of the line the assembly needs to be set in such a way that the feeding of sub assembly parts will come at the right time. As you can see the front and back have to be completed for the sh shoulder overlock attached to happen right so now as I'll just put in an arrow mark saying 7th and 5th operation needs to be completed for operation 10 to happen correct we need the front and we need the back for the operation to start so we need to set the line based on when operation number 10 is going to happen next comes the sleeves the sleeve operation does not come until operation number 14 so till that time we do not need sleeve sub assembly so the flow will be like this operation number 9 will go to sleeve attach and <coughs> placket search also we should also note that this operation comes first wherein we need to feed front and bottom so this might look a little bit confusing in terms of how we set up the machines but then this forms as a base for us to do the operation breakdown the um, setting up of machines the line plan and line manning now that the, the flow chart is finished and the flow chart is clear to you as well we will move on to the operation breakdown wherein we will mention the SAM values of the operation. We will also mention what is the target for each garment, each operation. We will also mention what are the machineries that are used for completing certain operations. This will help us in having a better clarity on how a polo t-shirt is stitched, right? Now let us move on to the operation breakdown. We will now discuss in detail on how the operation breakdown needs to be. So when we talk about operation breakdown, SAM will automatically come to it. What is SAM? SAM is basically the time taken expressed in minutes for a particular operation. So we need to mention the SAM and the machine type. Why do we need to know the machine type? It helps us in setting up and bringing in machines required for completion of the garment. We will also get to know whether we have the machines or we do not have the machines based on the availability and the setup of the garment. As we have discussed earlier, 
operation breakdown needs to happen, needs to be done when the sample of the garment is given to us. So now we are talking about not the pre-production sample but the buyer's sample. So let us do the operation breakdown of the garment of polo t-shirt. We already know the flow chart so this will help us in jotting down all the uh, various operations that needs to be done for the garment to be sewn. So the first operation as we have already discussed is the front and back part of it. The first operation here would be your front and back hem. Here the SAM would be 0.636 and the machine that is used here is a flat lock machine with trimmer. Why do we need trimmer? Once the hem is sewn, we need to trim the edges of the stitch. So the first operation front and back hem, the machine type here is a flat lock trimmer. Next we move on to the front sub assembly. Here the first operation we mentioned is the marking of the placket. industry they do not use the term placket they use the term patti. Now here the marking of the placket is a manual operation so we are not providing any SAM as of now. Actually we should be giving the SAM for a helper operation as well but then to simplify things we are currently not taking helper SAM. We are just use, using machine SAM. Next comes attaching of placket, uh, no sorry we are using hem front placket. I think this operation was missed in the previous flowchart. We need to hem the front placket and the SAM for this is 0 0.550 minutes. And the machine used here is a single needle, single needle lock stitch machine. With a UBT. What is UBT? UBT refers to the term called under bed, under bed trimmer which automatically trims once the stitch gets completed. So single needle lock stitch with UBT. Single needle is normally abbreviated to S N L S S N L S S N L S machine that is how we refer in industry as single needle lock stitch with UBT. The next operation being attach placket to the front. The SAM of this being 0.833 minutes. And the machine that is used is a double needle machine with cutter. So double needle machine, double needle lock stitch is abbreviated to DNLS, DNLS. So all these machines are generally uh, 
abbreviated to the short form for easy usage. The next operation here being front pocket edge stitch. The SAM for front pocket edge stitches is 0 0.510 minutes and the machine used here is a single needle lock stitch with underbred trimmer. The next operation in the front sub assembly is sewing of the box at the placket that is the box of the placket closing it here so the operation is the sam for this operation is at 0.882 minutes and the machine used here is a single needle um, lock stitch machine with an underbred trimmer. So we have one major sub assembly ready. Now we move on to the back sub assembly. Wherein we will put down the SAM values of the back sub assembly along with the machines. Back sub assembly. The first operation in back sub assembly being the moon patch overlock. The SAM of this operation is at 0 0.210 minutes. Since this is an overlock operation, the machinery used here is a 3 thread overlock. Now 3 thread overlock machines are also referred to as abbreviated in the industry as 3 TOL 3 thread overlock. The next operation in back is the moon patch attached with the back part. <laughs> now this operation has a SAM value of 0 0.652 minutes. And the machinery used here is a flat lock. It could be a flat lock, it could be a single needle also depending upon the requirement of the garment. Flat lock is a type of machine wherein the stitches are interlocked. So this flat lock is usually used in knitted garments. The most common machinery in knitted garments like t-shirts and polo t-shirts are flat lock overlock whereas when we come to woven the majority of the garments here being majority of the machines used are um, lock stitch machines. So our back sub assemblies are over now we move on to the sleeve sub assembly. Now in sleeve sub assembly the first operation is the rib attach. The SAM value of rib attach operation is at 0.452 minutes. 
and the machinery used in rib attach is a 3 thread overlock. And the next operation in sleeve as we have already discussed is the rib joint top stitch. The SAM value of rib joints top stitch is set 0 0.350 minutes and the machinery used ideally in top stitches the machinery would be a single needle machine. So, here we have a single needle machine. So, now the sleeve subassemblies are done, all our subassemblies are done, we will now move on to assembly operations. When coming to assembly operations, The first operation we have is a shoulder join. So, we do the shoulder overlock with the mobile on tape. The SAM value of the shoulder overlock is at 0.558 minutes. And the machine used here is an overlock. Why? We have already mentioned it as shoulder overlock. Here a 5 thread overlock machine is used. In industry 5 thread overlock is referred to as 5 T O L. 5 T O L because there are 5 threads used. After the shoulder overlock, the next operation here is the attaching of the collar with the body along with the tape. This tape could also be a piping sort of generally tapes are being used. Now in this scenario the SAM value here is at 0.772 and the machine used here is a flat lock machine. Flat lock is referred in industry as FL. The next operation here is the turning of the placket inside out and finally finishing the collar. The SAM value of finishing the collar is at 1.100 minutes. As you can see the SAM value is pretty high in this particular operation and the machinery used is a single needle lock stitch machine with UBT. The next operation after finishing collar is the finishing of the placket. So 
like I said, it is also referred to the term called patti. So, the finishing of the placket is stands at 0.645 minutes. And the machinery used here is again a single needle lock stitch machine with UBT. The sleeve sub assembly being attached to the body. So, the sleeve is attached and the placket surging is done. This is done by an overlock machine. The SAM of this stands at 0 0.950 minutes and the operation is done by a 5 thread overlock with chain cutter. Chain cutter is the overlock version of an UBT because overlock stitches comes in chain we refer to the term as chain cutter. So two operations are combined here as you can see one is a sleeve attach operation another one is your placket surging it is done by a 5 thread overlock with chain cutter. The next operation is the side seam overlock sorry the next operation is your sleeve top stitch the sleeve top stitch has a SAM value of 0.625 minutes this particular operation is not there in this garment but we are adding for calculation purpose Sleeve top stitch is a SAM value of 6.625 minutes and the operation is done by a flat lock machine. The next operation comes as the side seam overlock operation. Wherein the label and the button tape is also also attached in the side seam. So this has a SAM value of 0.862 minutes and the operation is done by a 4 thread overlock with chain cutter. So it is referred to as 5 TOL, sorry 4 TOL. The next operation comes to the making of the slits. So we do here the overlocking of the slits. The SAM of this particular operation stands at 0 0.400 minutes. And the machine, the machine that is utilized here is a three thread overlock with a chain cutter. The next operation comes the finishing of the slits with the tape. 
so it could be a mobilon tape inside or it could be a contrast tape inside depending upon the style so finishing of the slits with tape the sam value of this operation stands at 1.700 minutes and the uh, machine being used here is a single needle lock stitch machine with an underbred trimmer with ubt and the last and final operation is tacking at the sleeve ends and the sam mentioned here is at 0.303 and the machinery used here is also a single needle lock stitch machine with ubt SNLS with UBT. Now that we've jotted down all the SAM values of the garment, the total SAMs comes to. We need to add all the SAM values of all the operations we mentioned. If that is the case, the SAM total SAMs come to twelve point three four five minutes. Now we have calculated the total SAMs, from this we should calculate the estimated SAMs based on the capacity of the factory and the line. We will now also be able to find out what is the target that can be achieved at 100% by the factory and with how many operators. So as you can see SAM value forms the basis of all the calculations, from here we will do further calculations on what are the estimated SAMs, what is the target that is to be achieved at what efficiency. We have now calculate the, calculated the total SAM of the polo t-shirt. Now we need to work on actual practical numbers. Now that we have calculated the total SAM of the polo t-shirt which stands at 12.345 minutes. We will now calculate the estimated SAM. Now estimated SAM estimated SAM refers to that SAM which is converted based on the efficiency of the line. Now assuming the line is running at 65 percent efficiency. automatically all these timings will increase because the lining line is not running at 100 percent efficiency but only at 65 percent efficiency. Note that this time whatever we go in a SAM, what is the full form of SAM? Standard allowed minutes. It means on a standard at any given point of time that should be the benchmark of the line or the operation. So let us say I am saying 0 0.950 is the SAM it necessarily does not reflect the practical application. So we need to know what is the efficiency of our factory to work on these numbers. Let us say 
the efficiency estimated efficiency is at 65 percentage so we need to rework on all the sams and see what is the estimated sams that needs to be given that estimated sam will be the time that will be given as the target to the factory so how do we calculate an estimated sam estimated sam is calculated by this formula sam divided by efficiency in this case if sam is 0 0.950 minutes and the efficiency is at 65 percentage we need to put it as 65 percentage here so when we are calculating 0 0.950 divided by 0 0.65 the answer comes to since this is assembly correct so in assembly the answer comes to answer comes to 1.462 minutes you can see there is a difference between 0 0.950 till 1.462 minutes so this should be the time that we would be giving to the factory for working out of the uh, line SAM so I am just rewriting this for this operation answer is 1.462 so we need to work out for all the operations here similarly here this would be 0 0.625 divided by 65 percent efficiency which comes to 0.962 and for side seam overlock it will come to 0.862 divided by 65 percent efficiency the answer comes to 1.326 for overlocking of the slits we use the formula 0 0.400 divided by 65 percentage the answer comes to 0 0.615 finishing slits with tape the answer comes to 2.615 and finally tacking sleeve ends is 0 0.303 divided by 65 percentage the answer comes to 0 0.466 now we have what is the estimated uh, SAM time that would be taken at 65 percent efficiency so you need to rework on all your timings for all the SAMs that we have mentioned and calculate on the same you will find that the total of the estimated SAMs will come to 18.992 minutes I am not, just not talking about these numbers I am talking about the recalculation of the whole operation breakdown for this garment and your total will come to 18.992 minutes you can see that this is a stark difference even to if you want to try it out to put it in simpler terms 12.345 divided by will also give us the same timing 18.992 so now that we've got the estimated sams we need to calculate how many operators are needed for each operation now that we've calculated the estimated time which is at 18.992 minutes 
the fixed number of operators in the line that we have is 27. We need to work around with this 27 give or take excess of a couple of operators depending upon our availability and absenteeism. Now, uh, we need to calculate what is the target that we can achieve with the current set of values. So, for the target as usual we have the efficiency formula, efficiency percentage is equal to production into SAM divided by time into operators. Now, uh, th we need to calculate the production part of it. So, let me just redo the formula. So, we need to calculate what is the target production. Then, the formula would be efficiency percentage into time into operators divided by SAM. Also note that there is a 10 percent age of absenteeism that we are taking into consideration. So, absenteeism is at 10 percentage. So, if we are taking these into consideration then the formula would be uh, efficiency is at 0.65 percentage into time, time is one day of working 480 into operators, operators we have at 27. Now, we need to take the uh, absenteeism part into uh, calculation which is at 10 percentage right. So, how much will be present? 90 percentage will be present. So, 1 minus 10 percentage is taken for calculation divided by SAM. SAM here we are it is for 6.65 efficiency. So, SAM will be taken as 12.345. When we calculate this, the answer we get is 614 pieces. This becomes the target of the day. So, we have calculated now the target production that needs to be achieved with the scenario of 27 operators at 10 percent absenteeism, 65 percent efficiency target and for a SAM value of 8.9 uh, sorry SAM value of 12.345. If we are taking 8.992 then we should avoid calculating it at 65 percentage efficiency because this is converted for 65 percentage efficiency. Alright, so now ca we have calculated the target per day has become 614 pieces. The next thing we need to calculate is the number of operators required per operation. So, we have the estimated time from this we will be calculating the number of operators for per operation. So, the formula is this is a new formula which you are learning. is equal to estimated time, estimated SAM or divided by total SAM into 27 number of operators
into uh, since we are calculating the number of operators we need to add the absenteeism percentage to 100 percent 1 plus absenteeism so estimated SAM here is let us say for the operation of sleeve attached with pla placket surge estimated SAM is 1.462 divided by total SAM is 8.992 into number of operators what are the total number of operators we have 27 into 1 plus absenteeism which is 1 plus 10 percent why are we adding a 10 percent because we need to keep a buffer of what could be the shortage so so we are adding a 10 percent of excess operator to calculate in case we fall short all right so here the calculation will come to uh, 1.462 divided by 18.992 into 27 into 1.1 this will be the calculation and the answer for this would be 2.29 operators. This is the number of operators you will require inclusive of the absenteeism shortfall that you would face. So, the number of operators would be 2.29 can we try calculating it for the rest of the operations all right we will try for operation number two sleeve top stitch so the estimated sam for sleeve top stitch is 0.962 rest of the calculations are the same so if we calculate that the number of operators required for sleeve top stitches 1.50 all right so we need 1.50 operators to do the operation of sleeve top stitch for side seam overlock the estimated sam time is 1.326 so, in this formula we just change that into 1.326 and the answer is the rest of the details are the same we have the total SAM we have the number of operators and we have the absenteeism percentage and the present percentage. So, those are, those are the details that which will remain the same. So, we just need to change the estimated SAM time and hence the calculation here would come to 2.07 operators for overlock of slits the estimated SAM time is 0 0.615 so the number of operators will be if we do the calculation 0 0.615 the number of operators is 0 0.96 0.96 operators are required for overlock of slits and finishing slits with tape we have an estimated SAM of 2.615 and the number of operators required are 4.09. Tacking sleeve ends the final operations the SAM value estimated SAM value is at 0.466 and when we do the calculation for the number of operators per operation 0.466 the answer comes to 0.73.
also the final set of now i would want you guys to do the same exercise for all the other previous operations as well if we do that the total number of operators comes to 29.700 so we need to see how much excess operators we have here and how we need to balance please note that there is a 10% of absenteeism over and above this which will occur and hence we have an excess buffer of um, we have the our line is for 27 we have an excess buffer of 2.7 operators extra we need to figure out how to how to bring in them so this is how a line is being set for a polo t-shirt hope you guys now have a clarity on how we do the operation flow breakdown the operation breakdown the process flow chart how we calculate operators how we calculated estimated time based on the efficiency how we calculated the target production and also how we calculated the number of operators per operation based on the efficiency and standard set of operators insert this before the conclusion of the previous numerical now there is a common terminology in the garment industry which always comes down which is always discussed the terminology is pieces per head this is what is discussed all through on a daily basis like how we talk about efficiency pieces per head is a very standard and common way of questioning pieces per head is a very common way of questioning the lines ability to produce so that's how the uh, factory owners talk in the sense how many pieces per head i've given you so many operators to work with how many pieces per head are you able to retrieve so that's how they do the simple calculation of costing that is to bring it in real terms so it's a very very simple formula the formula here is pieces per head is equal to total production per day divided by the number of operators meaning how many pieces have one operator earned in that day so to find out how their costing is going which way their costing is doing this is a very um, simple way of finding out the health uh, of the line so for example here in this scenario if you are taking up the total production per day we have 614 pieces correct so to achieve 614 pieces how many operators am i using i'm using 27 operators right i'm using 27 operator now if i do this calculation my answer comes to close to 22.7 that is 23 pieces now this is a very um, I would say average pieces of pieces per head the, the health of the line will show it will be better if this number increases and if this number comes down it automatically reflects that the costing is going haywire the pieces per head is like I said is one of the most key key terminologies that is being followed in the garment industry but it just cannot be used for all products because it varies from product to product let's say the target pieces production will change with respect to the product if it is a very difficult style like a jacket or a style with um, high difficulty then probably your target production would come down with the same number of operators so if you are having a multi product line or varied setup of lines then this will keep changing based on the product or style to style 
but in case you have a standard set let's say i have only a shirts factory or i have only a bottoms factory you can set a standard pieces per head target for each line and see do a comparison on a daily basis this of course is still a very very common practice in the garment factories of india and is widely followed everywhere